On this episode of Ask Dr. Bitcoin, we're going to go over some exciting news for Bitcoin. We're going to talk about what a Turing Complete blockchain is, and we're going to discuss the best way to buy your Bitcoin. Stay tuned. Well, hello there. I'm Mark Risen Hopkins, a blockchain and Bitcoin enthusiast who's been studying and learning about the space since 2011. And as I mentioned in the intro segment, we're going to be talking uh, today about how to buy Bitcoin. The reason for that is because we've recently crossed over a really big threshold for the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin world. Bitcoin is at 10,000. I may have buried the lead there. Bitcoin is at 10,000. I'll repeat that. It's, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, not necessarily uh, from uh, any other perspective other than it's a nice big round number that analysts have been predicting and we hit kind of on target. Uh, if you look at the history of Bitcoin, uh, it's actually in the thumbnail photo, which could work on that. That's, uh, it shows the rate at which cryptocurrency has been increasing, Bitcoin specifically has been increasing in value, and the rate at which it has been increasing in value has itself been increasing in frequency. It's uh, kind of almost a, a logarithmic curve, if you will. It's for that reason uh, that a lot of uh, Wall Street analysts, actual Wall Street analysts, not just guys on Reddit, are predicting uh, 25,000 uh, within 2018 and as high as 40,000 by the end of 2018. I think that is a, a realistic uh, uh, present, uh, presentation of, or, or, or prediction of the future, not because I have any specific insight on the direction of the, of the value of the coin, but because I see signals about the, the, the mainstream adoption of it. Other news that kind of goes along with that today is uh, some Wall Street uh, uh, trading firms uh, uh, that have announced that they're going to allow futures trading of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. You've also see uh, coming up this week uh, is uh, a big thing in, in terms of the consumer uh, knowledge of Bitcoin. Big Bang Theory is going to have kind of a Bitcoin centered episode where it's going to expose the, 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 the topic to a whole new world of people that might not quite understand it. I can't believe a single Bitcoin is worth $5,000. Didn't we mine some a few years ago? It's a Big Bang windfall. What are you going to do with your share of the money? Buy a Taigo. <laughs> but you know, don't count your Bitcoin. How much is in there? It's empty. Before it's... Mm. You know where it is? Should I be the bigger man? You should. Oh, why'd I ask you? So there's a lot of reasons, a lot of signals, and a lot of uh, 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 marketing, if you will, for, for Bitcoin that's happening and people taking it serious in a way that it hasn't been taken serious in the past. Along with that is going to have the reactionaries uh, that will come back and say, is it a bubble? Is it going to burst? And I think... Um, you know, always you have to be wary of corrections uh, of, of, of things when you're talking about trading and assets and, and, and stocks and that sort of thing. But with Bitcoin, we're talking about something that the uh, people from the SEC have termed perhaps the new, uh, the only truly new asset class in over 100 years. And it can behave differently than what we've seen other asset classes. You can't really compare it to a stock. You can't compare it to a bond or a currency or other things there, the, the adoption might drive conceivably the value and into the tens of thousands, and that could be a reasonable value for it uh, because it's just different from other things. So it'll be very interesting to watch. Stay tuned and we'll see where it goes together. On today's What Is segment, we're going to explore the concept of Turing Complete Blockchains. Now, we're gonna break this down into two segments. As you may recall from the previous episode, we discussed the idea, the very basics of blockchain itself. There's two segments to this term. We're gonna we're gonna break it down, Turing Complete and blockchain. Now, blockchain, as we said last week, was a uh, database protocol technology for removing the requirement for trust between counterparties. If you want to uncompact that, you can go back to that episode and, and, and hear all about that. So I'm assuming you understand that and you're, you're caught up. The next segment of this term is Turing complete. And that's a term from computability theory. And uh, the dictionary definition here is a system of data manipulation rules that is said to be Turing complete if it can be used to simulate the uh, Turing machine on a system. So uh, in English, uh, Alan Turing created a Turing machine, which is a form of early computing. And if you are to uh, be, if you're able to simulate 
what he has done, uh, what he did uh, during World War II on any type of virtual system or physical system, it is a Turing complete system, which is, the mean, which is to say that it can perform calculations, perform uh, evaluations on the state of data. Um, very simply put in modern terms, uh, it is the computational layer to uh, a storage technology. So uh, going back to our original term, if you're looking at Bitcoin and blockchain as a database technology, a Turing complete blockchain is a database plus compute. Uh, in cloud computing terms, that would mean uh, it's like Amazon's AWS uh, has several components to it, one of them being S3, the storage layer, another component being EC2, the compute layer. If you're more familiar with computing, like desktop computing technology, uh, the uh, Bitcoin as a protocol is more like the hard drive and uh, Ethereum or, or a Turing complete blockchain is more like the CPU. So uh, like I, I just mentioned, Ethereum, uh, Stratus, Neo, uh, there are several uh, different varieties of Turing complete blockchain out there and they all perform uh, relatively quickly compared to uh, more traditional uh, non-Turing complete blockchains like Bitcoin. Um, there, uh, there are limitations though, as we explored last week during the Gollum segment when we were talking about the Gollum project, um, the, the block resolution time or how fast it can perform those interactions uh, is very slow compared to modern computing, which is what the Gollum project hopes to solve, but very fast compared to uh, other forms of traditional uh, blockchains like Bitcoin, Litecoin and others. You know, 30 seconds or 10 seconds or even uh, a minute Block resolution time does seem pretty fast in relationship to those other blockchains, but if you're using a computer and you hit the J on your keyboard and it takes 10 seconds for that J to appear on your screen, obviously you can see the, uh, uh, the, the limitations there and why it's, it might be considered somewhat slow. What is it useful for? The primary uh, use case for these, uh, these types of technologies currently is for the launches of ICOs and other types of smart contracts. A smart contract is, uh, simply put, it's like, a, it's like a legal contract, but it's written in software code, and you use uh, objectively measurable uh, satisfaction criteria to determine whether the contract is satisfied or invalidated. Um, we'll get more into smart contracts in greater detail in future episodes, but uh, that gives you the very basics of what a Turing Complete Blockchain is. On today's how-to segment, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to buy Bitcoin. It's probably one of the most frequently asked questions I get, especially during times of market upturns as, we, as, as they go. So the, we're gonna to try to bucket the answer into different categories because how much you're trying to buy really does influence the best way to try to go about getting it. So uh, in general, if you know somebody like me that sells Bitcoin, or know, know of a company in your area that sells Bitcoin, like a, like a gold and silver dealer, oftentimes they will do it as well. You probably wanna start there. Um, if you're going for small quantities, like uh, then, then that's going to be, uh, you know, and by small quantities, I'm saying like maybe between five and 50 bucks. Find a friend. If you don't have a friend in that area, then you wanna to go to a website called coinbase.com. It is essentially the PayPal of cryptocurrency. It is the largest uh, cryptocurrency wallet and seller out there. And uh, there are probably a, a half dozen other similar competitors that are gonna come and go. I would go down the list and name them, but uh, they're gonna come and go. So I would uh, start with Coinbase. They're, they're reputable enough that they'll, they'll probably be around for quite a while. Uh, if you're gonna be in that kind of 500 and up range, uh, 500 to tens of thousands, you're certainly gonna to wanna to go through like a broker dealer. And again, if you don't know one, if you don't know me, uh, then you, you, there's, a, there's a place where you can find them. There's a site called localbitcoins.com and it's a little bit like the Craigslist of Bitcoin. It's a place to find ATMs, uh, Bitcoin ATMs and uh, Bitcoin broker dealers. And uh, usually the, the transaction will go something like you'll find somebody in your area that sells Bitcoin. You'll set up a, you know, an amount, you'll send them an amount that you want to get. They'll set up a meeting in a coffee shop or a bank lobby. You'll do the transaction in a public place. Everyone walks away happy. You'll probably spend between four to 12 percent on that transaction, which can be a significant chunk of, of how much Bitcoin you're trying to buy. For that reason, the closer you get to the higher end of uh, that, uh, that uh, fee range 
and the amount that you're trying to buy, you may want to actually look at setting up an exchange account of your own. Uh, there's a lot of different exchanges that are reputable. Uh, most of them are listed on uh, coinmarketcap.com. The, the ones that I like the most are Kraken, GDAX, and Bitstamp. Uh, there are many other reputable uh, exchanges out there. Here's what you're going to run into with those. On the one hand, you're going to get amazing exchange rates, sometimes as low as 0.1 or 0.5% on the transaction. The downside is they have high KYC AML requirements. KYC and AML stands for Know Your Customer and Any Money Laundering. They're a set of regulations and guidelines set by the federal government to prevent people from doing bad things with uh, money laundering. Um, and in, in some cases with the exchanges that I mentioned, they'll have up to 40 points of data beyond just like your social security card and your photo ID and your passport that they have to uh, record from you uh, when you're dealing with millions of dollars in each transaction. So know that going in and it, sometimes it may take you a month or two to get authenticated on those things. And if you're looking at getting a purchase done much quicker than that, you are basically kind of relegated to the world of paying high fees with broker dealers. So there you go. That's the that's the uh, the kind of the breakdown of, of of how it is you go about buying Bitcoin. Small amounts. Find a friend or go use Coinbase. Kind of that middle area. Probably want to use a broker dealer. And if you're going to be a regular buyer, buy high volumes, and you're probably going to want to go get your exchange account taken care of yourself. Well, there you have it. Your blockchain and cryptocurrency prescription. As always, these are just my thoughts, and I encourage you to seek out a second opinion. Subscribe for more videos on blockchain and cryptocurrency. And if you enjoyed today's video, share it with a friend so they could see it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to see the receptionist on your way out. I'm bad at memorizing lines. I'm, I don't know why.